Consider smashing a hole in your wallet at terrible sand escapes. A hundred times worse than something dead. A typewriter, a gold pen, satellite phones, and stacks and sacks of cash can be found inside. If you guess Pablo Escobar, you are correct. In this video, we will be looking at where Pablo Escobar kept his $500 billion away from the cops' eyes. But before we talk about it, if you are new to our channel, welcome to 1%. Here, we will give you only facts, so if you want more of that, leave a like and subscribe to our channel, so that more people can enjoy these. Now without further ado, let's get into it. So, let's start with who Pablo Escobar was and how he became so rich. Escobar, who was born in Rio Negro and raised in Medellin, briefly attended the University of Autonoma Latino America of Medellin but dropped out before graduating. Instead, he began engaging in criminal activity, selling illegal cigarettes and fake lottery tickets, as well as participating in motor vehicle theft. He began working for numerous drug smugglers in the early 1970s, frequently kidnapping and holding individuals for ransom. Escobar was elected as an alternate member of Colombia's Chamber of Representatives as part of the liberal alternative movement in the 1982 parliamentary election. He was in charge of community projects such as the construction of houses and football fields, which earned him acclaim among the residents of the communities he visited. Pablo Escobar founded and led Medellin Cartel, making him perhaps the most powerful drug trafficker in the world throughout the 1980s and early 1990s. Although it is impossible to quantify his net worth because of the great measures Escobar took to keep his money hidden, it is estimated to be $30 billion or $420 million every week in revenue at the peak of his career, of course. Escobar, known as the King of Cocaine, was said to be the seventh richest person on the planet. He is thought to be responsible for some 4,000 deaths he even used these assets to sustain a lavish lifestyle that compromised a variety of properties, ranging from exotic animals to bullfighting venues. Pablo Escobar was formerly the seventh richest person on the earth, and he was on Forbes' list of global billionaires for seven years. Despite his reputation for violence, he utilized his fortune to sponsor charitable causes, which helped him gain an alternate seat in Colombian Congress. Escobar had so much money that it couldn't be laundered fast enough for him to use it. According to Escobar's brother, the only way Escobar could keep his riches safe was to bury them in the ground and hide it in the walls of the homes he owned. In his book, The Accountant's Story, the most difficult problem was keeping the money hidden. I invented the Caleta system, which is a small hiding hole in the walls of homes and flats. A single Caleta could contain up to $5 million in cash. Unsurprisingly, these hideouts were not always the safest places to hold money. Despite the tales of cash stacks shrink-wrapped and placed in plastic barrels, Roberto Escobar stated, we would write off 100% of our money because the rodents would devour it in the storage or it would be damaged by water or lost. In his interview, Nicholas Escobar stated that part of the money he discovered was broken and unusable. Escobar meticulously stored his riches, and since his murder in a gunfight with the police in 1993, there has been public fixation with the location of his fortune. Soon after Escobar's death and the subsequent fragmentation of the Medellin cartel, the cocaine market became dominated by the rival Cali cartel until the mid-1990s, when its leaders were either killed or captured by the Colombian government. The Robin Hood image that Escobar had cultivated maintained a lasting influence in Medellin. Many there, especially many of the city's poor, whom Escobar had aided while he was alive, mourned his death, and over 25,000 people attended his funeral. Some of them considered him a saint and prayed to him to receive divine help. Escobar was buried at the Monto Sacro Cemetery. Since his death, numerous treasure hunters have been encouraged by unconfirmed rumors of millions of dollars shrink-wrapped in barrels and basements and gold bars hidden in the jungles. Roberto Sendoya is one such treasure hunter. But Roberto is no ordinary fortune hunter. He is Pablo Escobar's hidden son. Seeking to inherit his father's billions, Roberto was saved as a youngster from the shooting that murdered his mother, only to be adopted by an M16 agent stationed in Colombia. 
He was deported to the United Kingdom to evade kidnapping by the cartel. He didn't find out about his biological father till he was in his 20s. On his adopted father's deathbed, the retired M16 agent left him a coded memo with all the information he had on how to locate Escobar's millions. Roberto is looking for his biological father using information from his adopted father. Treasure hunters have achieved success even without the assistance of Roberto's secret code or Nicholas's visions. The new property owner and his workers uncovered a locked safe during the demolition of Pablo Escobar's former residence in Florida. It is still uncertain whether anything is inside. The discovery of a verified $18 million in the walls of Nicholas Escobar's residence is expected to reignite the public interest in locating Escobar's treasure. It is estimated that 10 times the amount collected by the police is still hidden somewhere. While the temptation of gold bars and sacks of unmarked banknotes hidden behind the walls is definitely great, locating Escobar's money is fraught with danger, even if it were possible. While the new owner and his demolition crew were able to rescue one safe from Escobar's previous Florida estate, they also reported one taken from the property. While Nicholas appeared to have had a lot of luck discovering money in his walls, he also detailed an episode before his uncle's death in which he was kidnapped by a mysterious guy hunting for Escobar. For seven hours I was tortured, two of my employees were chainsawed, Nicholas informed the interviewer. While Escobar is no longer alive, uninvolved people should consider it five before getting involved with the cartel. Nicholas Escobar told Colombian TV channel Red Plus Noticias that in addition to the money, he discovered other objects in the apartment, some of which are broken and unusable. A gold pen, satellite phones, a typewriter and an underdeveloped reel of a film are among them. So, this is all we have ever found. From Pablo's wealth, there are billions of dollars out there ready to be found. Share this with your friends who you think would benefit from watching this video. And make sure to leave a like and subscribe button. And remember to turn on the notification bell so you can see all the future content. Until then, stay safe.